Hello et bienvenue à Anglais Prononciation F2F. Je m'appelle Paula et je suis votre prof de prononciation d'anglais britannique. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous lire un texte qui vient du journal The Guardian en Angleterre qui pose des questions sur un débat écologique qui peut être intéressant pour tout le monde, soit vous avez une maison ou pas. Ce sont des questions d'un gazon parfait ou une prairie de fleurs sauvages. C'est écrit par euh, Patrick Barkham et ça a été publié aujourd'hui, samedi le 13 mars 2021. Donc, prêt? On y va. Lawn growers throw in the trowel as meadows replace perfect stripes. Traditional mowing regimes being ditched as aesthetics and morality come under scrutiny. They were once a status symbol for the rich and later the pride and joy of suburbia. But the immaculately striped tightly mown lawn is becoming an endangered species. Monty Don this week called time on the predominantly male British obsession with a tidy lawn, arguing that fossil fuel powered mowing was noisy and about the most injurious thing you can do to wildlife. As gardeners turn lawns into wildlife meadows, or take the eco-conservation charity Plant Life's increasingly popular hashtag no mow may pledge, so stately homes, parks and playing fields are ditching traditional mowing regimes and allowing wild flowers to flourish. Even the quads of Oxbridge colleges, regarded by traditionalists as home to some of the finest lawns in the world, are dabbling with rewilding. King's College, Cambridge, last year, turned the lawn besides its chapel into a meadow. Lawns were cultivated by the very wealthiest, who could afford to employ men with scythes. In the 1830s, the first cylinder mowers were pulled by a pony in soft leather boots to protect the grass. But the arrival of suburbia and the petrol-driven mower in 1902 led to the cult of the Immaculate Lawn becoming a national obsession. Now the aesthetics and even morality of a striped lawn are being challenged. Michael Polan, the US writer, declared, Lawns are nature purged of death and sex. Don's comments were music to our ears, said Trevor Dines of Plant Life which urges people to pause mowing lawns in May to allow daisies, bird's foot trefoil and dandelions to flower in the grass. Those taking part in the charity's Every Flower Counts survey have identified 207 species of flowering plant in lawns, including bee orchids, meadow saxifrage and eyebright. Plant Life calculates that one square metre of lawn left to flower supplies enough nectar to sustain on average 3.8 bees a day. Dine said plant life had been inundated with local authorities and others such as hospital trusts seeking to maximise flower and nectar production on parklands and green spaces. It's a win-win for everybody, said Dines. You're cutting down on your petrol costs, CO2 emissions and the time it takes to do the work and it's a massive benefit for wildlife. Last spring's lockdown led to the inadvertent wilding of stately home lawns. The furloughing of gardeners meant the National Trust had to trial wilding in some of its 250 formal gardens and parks. The olive grove in Overbeck's, Devon, which is normally cut weekly, was left uncut between May and September to develop a wildflower meadow. 
Chris Groves, the head gardener, said, It looked much better than mown grass, so this is how we intend to manage in the future. The Royal Horticultural Society advises gardeners to let lawns go brown in summer rather than water them and consider drought-tolerant wildflower meadows over traditional grass. At its gardens at Wisley in Surrey, the 50-acre arboretum and conifer lawn are now managed as a meadow rather than being cut short. One garden designer, Alex Collins, said, A tidy lawn was a generational tendency. I've come across people, men, who are obsessed with weed and feed on their lawns, and they tend to be people Monty Don's age, but that might disappear in a generation, she said. Her clients still want grass areas, for dogs, children or deck chairs, but are keen on wild flowers and clover lawns, a nod towards the Elizabethan penchant for scented lawns of chamomile or thyme. I often hear my clients say, We want a wildlife-friendly garden, she said. There's definitely a movement towards things like wildflower turf. But the Immaculate Lawn retains its champions. The National Trust maintains fine lawns in gardens such as Cliveden in Berkshire, Polston Lacey in Surrey and Blickling Hall in Norfolk, arguing that they are part of the spirit of the place. And David Hedges Gower, the founder of the Lawn Association, argues that King's College's wildflower meadow will look like a muddy field for four or five months of the year. Hedges Gower fears that the well-tended lawn is the victim of a pincer movement between the welcome trend for wildflower meadows and the less welcome spread of artificial turf. He has launched a petition to ban plastic grass. Lawns should be looked on as an environmental necessity, he said. Take grass away from our planet and we're not here. Hedges Gower argues that Don's criticisms of tidy lawns are based on a stereotypical view derived from previous eras' shaven lawns and it is possible to have a neat and environmentally friendly native grass lawn. The British lawn can continue for a long time, he said. We've got battery-powered cylinder mowers where you can have that stripe. We've got organic fertilisers and native grasses that don't need watering. The TV show Gardener's World need to come out of the 1970s and start talking about modern lawn care. Even plant life points out the benefits of both long and short grass. Its research shows that mowing lawns once every month maximises floral abundance, while a mix of short and long grass optimises both biodiversity and flowering periods. Nick Fraser the head gardener at the National Trust's Nunnington Hall, North Yorkshire, frames wildflower areas with mown grass to ensure that it doesn't look neglected or unmanaged. He's also created a tapestry lawn with a checkerboard of square metre patches of daisies, self-heal and bird's foot trefoil. When we first started the wildflower meadows, people used to ask, Is your mower broken? Nobody says that now, he said. Ten years ago, said Fraser, curtains would twitch over an untidy lawn in suburbia. In ten years' time, people are going to be tutting over a neatly mown lawn and thinking, that's not very wildlife friendly. Et vous? Que pensez-vous? Est-ce qu'il faut avoir un tout prix Un gazon parfait? Ou est-ce que c'est mieux d'avoir une prairie de fleurs sauvages? Ou peut-être on peut avoir les deux, n'est-ce pas? Donc, à bientôt. See you soon. Bye for now.